accepted to have been responsible for over 20,000 smoking wrecks by 1944. The name Stug itself comes from the German word Sturmgeschütz, which roughly translates into assault gun. The number 3 indicates that it was designed and built on the proven chassis of the Panzer III. The AUSF is an abbreviation to Ausführung, which translates to version, and the letter G marks the most produced and used version of this assault gun and tank destroyer. The success of the Stug was down to a couple of factors. The low main body made sure that it was easy to hide, and together with a very effective 75mm gun it supported, this was a highly effective ambush vehicle. Thanks to its success and the relatively low production costs, Stugs were produced in very high numbers all throughout the war. A lot of these bad boys were also sent to the Allied nations. In fact, one of the most famous results of this machine was not by the Germans, but by Finland. To help fight against the Russian invasion, Germany supplied 30 Stugs to Finland in their first delivery batch, which was instantly put to good use. During the next weeks, these 30 tank destroyers destroyed 87 Russian tanks while only losing 8 of their own, some of which were destroyed by their own crews to avoid capture. And their duty was not even done with the end of the Great War. Some of the surviving tank destroyers served in various other nations' military up until the 60s. So, after all this grand history, I guess you have pretty high expectations for the in-game version as well. Lucky for us, the Stug does not disappoint here either. Let's start the inspection with the gun selection. The Stug 3G has a choice of two main guns. Your good old trusty 105mm howitzer and the 75mm L70 sniper gun. The howitzer is the same that you had so much fun with in the lower tiers with the Hetzer and the Stug 3 Ausführung B, so it will be tempting to keep it using even a tier higher. Don't get soft, however, as you will need to use the sniper gun to unlock the true potential of this vehicle, and trust me, after the first couple of shots, you won't feel sorry for that howitzer anymore. The main reason why this is a good sniper gun is the very good average penetration at 150mm, the great accuracy at 0.33m, and the excellent aiming time at only 1.7 seconds. The alpha damage is on the lower side with only 135 average damage per shot, but as you can pump out over 13 of those per minute with a 4.5 second reload time between your shots, you are able to inflict some serious pain with it. The 8 degree gun depression is quite good as well, and so is the gun traverse speed at 44 degrees per second. The only not so impressive stat on the gun is really the gun arc, which is only 20 degrees. But as your hull traverse and aiming times are really good, that won't be a huge issue. Overall, this is just a really solid gun that won't feel helpless even in higher tier battles. Protection-wise, we are doing quite well too. While your health pool is plain average at only 350 HP, apart from the brutal AT2, this is actually the most armored tank destroyer at tier 5. You have mostly 80mm of angled armor in the front, at the sides 30mm, and again 50mm at the back. As you can see, the ass of this tank destroyer is surprisingly well protected, so if you come up against one of these from the back, shoot them at the back of the superstructure instead. Let's also speak a word about the camo rating, which is quite important for tank destroyers. The Stug 3G has the worst camo rating of its tier, but not by much. You can make it work, especially with camo paint, a well-trained crew or a camo net, but just be aware that you probably have to be extra careful when firing not to get detected. And finally, let's speak a bit about mobility and the view range. First, let's get over with the bad news. Following the tradition of the previous Stug version B and the Hetzer, this baby is blind as a bat with only 310 meters view range and the 450 meter signal range isn't that amazing either. You will have to rely on your teammates a lot for spotting the targets for you. Luckily, you are quite mobile with a 40 km per hour top speed and a 47 degree per second hull traverse, so you can always get into cheeky positions to get into the sides of the opposition and to make your teammates spot for you whether they want to or not. 
Regarding equipment, I use the gun rammer, vents and the camo net to go all in on the DPM. Binoculars could be considered as well, but as you have a really low view range to begin with, even the extra 25% range won't be amazing. Crew skill wise, it's camo and six cents with priority for sure. So, that's the Stuck 3G for you in a nutshell. Really good machine that holds up also in higher tier matches. Your DPM will shred them up in no time, and your high penetration and accuracy will make sure that those shells get where they have to. Just make sure to play a bit more carefully when you are up against higher tier enemies, and be aggressive with those same or lower tier tanks, and you should be just fine. But that's probably enough about the numbers. Let's have a look at the taste tanker I mentioned earlier. Alright, so here we are in our Stuck 3G on the Abbey or Monastery map, as you would like to call it. And we are top tier. Oh yes, this should be fun. Now of course every vehicle is best when it's top tier. But when you are in a reliable machine like the Stug, you can really dominate if you are a little bit careful. Like, <laughs> if you are not getting shot in the back by the uh, tanks that can't wait to fire their gun. Now, in the beginning, I actually come here to the wrong side. When you are in a tank destroyer, and you want to begin the match by sniping from the base, you should be heading to the other side to face the road that leads up to the castle, where also the light tanks did go. Your aim then is to catch the enemy light tanks as they zoom up the hill and into the castle, and if everything goes well, you can put a couple of shots into them before they disappear. But it seems everybody is interested in the eastern side, or just bumbling about around the cap circle. Apart from one lonely Panzer 1C, there's nobody going to the western flank. And of course, as soon as we move, Lux pops up and we don't get to shoot him. And. <laughs> If I would have waited just a second, this could have been a kill which would have meant my first Redly Waters. But hey, can't get everything. Anyways, that Panzer 1C is great that he's trying to spot for us, but alone he won't be able to do anything. So, let's accompany him and protect this important flank. Quite often, it's the heavy engagement, engagement zone. Now, there are a couple of enemy heavies, there is a Churchill 3, a T1 Heavy and a KV1 Ascent. Two out of those three were actually spotted still around the base, so hopefully there won't be much opposition on this flank. Yep, all the heavies are still in the middle. So that means maybe a couple of lights, maybe some mediums, but we should be about alright. So let's see who we can find. This is a weird matchup. None of the teams are, well, playing great, to say the least. But this is not something we should feel sorry about. This just means we have a chance for a great match for ourselves. So, so far, only an M4 has been spotted, and he is focusing down on that Panzer 1C, who is luckily retreating. So that should give us the opportunity to go up around him. And he's completely alone, so that means he's exactly where we want him to be. That's a nice shot in the back, the back of its turret. Have to keep an, an eye on the map. Make sure there is nobody coming up behind us. And we take a shot there, but there's nothing we can't handle. And look at the DPM. I'm sorry, that was it for you for this match. So that was actually a dangerous tank. M4s can be quite nasty. But he was no match for the Stuck. Let's see if we can get a bite out of this tier 3 tank destroyer, but no. Instead, we get to take out the KV-1S. It's an important kill if one of the enemy heavy tanks is done. Let's see if we can get sneak in one more shot to that enemy Stug. 
come on. Nope, not from here. Okay, time to relocate. Keep moving, looking at the map. Well, there is an SU-85B. If we are just murder our artillery in the right hand corner of the map. But there is a BDRG-1B in our cap area, which is either a bot or a very, well, let's say, interesting player. But he should be enough to take out that SU-85B. Oh, there is the enemy Stug. Well, there was the enemy Stug. And that means there is an M41 HMC and a T1 Heavy. Right before, oh, there is the artillery. Let's take him out. He is... did not spot us. He was focusing on someone else and there he goes. Very good. So that means there is a T1 Heavy up there and there is a Churchill, someone in the town. In the meantime, the BDR did take care of the SU-85B, so... Thank God that did work out just as planned. And now my plan is to go up behind the uh, T1 Heavy, <laughs> as I find it a little bit difficult to get down this road, but hey. But as the Panzer C1 goes around, I choose the other path. And uh-oh, there is the Churchill. And that's one of the enemy heavies, so it's definitely somebody we want to take out with priority. So I have to be careful that the um, T1 Heavy doesn't come down behind us. And there we go. Churchill didn't last very long now, did it? So, that means there is a birch gun, tier 4 enemy artillery, and a T1 heavy. And there is the enemy heavy tank. Let's see, uh, we did try to take a shot at in his ass as he was rolling down, but Right now, priority is to take out the birch gun and... Well, it either did bounce or it missed. I'm not quite sure. He's definitely aiming at us. So... Oh, and he barely misses. That means he is toast. Alright, so we have our 